Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to start setting up the core game engine. So, first off, we already have some very basic code just set up from the last video, getting the window going, but I think we can go ahead and expand on this a bit. First off, I want to change the access modifiers for a few of these, because not everything's public. It was good for setting up a quick skeleton, but... The only real methods I need anything outside to access are start and stop. That's it. Everything else is all internal to the engine. Next up, I want to make our start method just, you know, do a little bit more than instantly call the run method, because that's not all that needs to be done. First off, I'm going to create a private boolean is running, and in my initialization, I'm going to initialize this false. And the reason for this is this variable is predictably going to tell us whether or not our engine is actually running. So if we aren't running, then we're going to run. Actually, I'm going to do that differently. I want to do if is running, then return. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. I'm just going to do it this way. And stop. I'm going to do the same sort of thing. If we aren't running, then I'm just going to return, and in here I'm going to set is running to false. Now I'm going to change around our run method a little bit. We've got our pretty much our final start and stop methods. So now, while is running. While we're running, we're going to render. And one thing I'm going to do in here is if window dot is close requested, then we're going to stop. So, this code should essentially do the exact same thing, except now it's just a little bit more useful. And you'll see pretty soon, this is going to expand into a pretty powerful run system. But, anyways, going to go ahead and run, and it instantly closes. That's okay. But, actually that's a good question. Oh, because I, in the run method, first off, I want it to say it is running, because when you run, you want it to start running, right? Right. So now, good. It should start running and keep running, just like before. If I click the close button, it should stop. Excellent. And at the very end, I want to call the cleanup method, after we're done running. And actually, that's one thing I want to add to our window method. I'm going to create a public static void dispose just to clean up our display. Here I'm just going to do display to destroy. Pretty straightforward. So, window.dispose. That's all that's going to be in our cleanup for now. And now, we've still got a very basic game engine set up. It's definitely not the final thing, but hey, it's, it's getting things started. Now we're going to start our first really serious bit of coding we're going to create our whole game updating system. It's going to decide when we update the game, when we need to take in more user input, and when we need to render the game. So, yeah. But before we do that, I'm just going to create a really simple class called Time. This is going to be our time system. It's going to be how we manage time, and I'm going to create just a few quick things here. First off, public static void Get time. This is going to return system dot nano time. Oh wait, pu public static long. There we go. And I'm also going to have one more method, which is going to be public static long. Actually, public static double. Get delta. And this method is going to return the amount of time that passes between frames. I. I'm having it here just sort of for later, but trust me, we'll talk a lot more about deltas in a bit. So, I'm going to have a private variable, private static double, it's going to be delta. This method's going to just return delta. And I'm also going to have public static... wait, yes, public static void set delta, double delta, delta this dot delta equals delta, except actually it should be time dot delta. 
So there. That's all I want to do in the time class right now. Nothing big, nothing fancy, just a wrapper for some time functions that I'm going to need later. Actually, pretty much right now. See, I want the game to update once every fixed unit of time. That way, my frame rate, or how fast I draw the scene, has no effect on how the scene actually behaves. I can still make my ball move once every unit of time, regardless of how many of those times I'm actually able to draw it. So, in order to do that, I just need two things. First off, I'm going to create a constant, so final double, and this is going to be how many updates I get per second. And I'm going to call this frame cap, because it's effectively going to serve as a frame limit. And it's going to be 5000.0 in my case, because I'm pretty sure I can't draw 5,000 times a second, even with a blank window. And the other thing I'm going to need is in my time class, I'm going to need to know how long one second is. Since my time's in nanoseconds, that's going to be public, static, final, long, I'm going to call it second, which is going to be equal to 1 billion. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I'm going to cast as long. And there, that's all I'm going to need in order to actually do this. So, first thing I'm going to want to know is how long one frame takes. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to start off with this variable called last time, which is going to be the time that the previous frame started drawing. I'm going to initialize that to just time.getTime. And then every frame, I'm going to create a long called start time which is going to equal time dot get time. And you can see where this is going. I'm going to create, not current time, past time, so the amount of time it took for that last frame to, you know, work. It's going to be start time minus last time. That's going to be however long the previous frame took. And then, of course, after this, I'm going to set my last time equal to whatever the time this was, because now this frame is quote-unquote, previous frame, as far as this calculation is concerned. So, cool. Now, after that's done, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to create this accumulator variable called unprocessed time, which is going to start off at zero, and actually I want this to be a double, and you'll see why. And what this unprocessed time is going to be, it's just going to keep track of how much time I still need to process, so how many times I still need to update the game. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say past time, wait, no, unprocessed time, plus equals past time. So it increases by past time, but past time is long. So I'm going to divide that by, I'm going to cast this to a double, time dot second. So however long one second is, cast to a double. And that should get me however much time has passed in, well, represented in double form. So, there we go. That's going to keep, this is just going to keep a running total of how much time I still need to account for. So, one final thing I need is, and this can be a final double if I really want to, not that it particularly matters, but actually if I'm going to do that, I'm going to put it right here. It's going to, I'm going to call this frame time, the amount of time one frame takes. That's 1 over my frame cap. And yeah, I could go ahead and make that the constant, but this is a little more intuitive to work with in terms of like setting frame rates. So there you go. And now I can go ahead and create the big loop. So while unprocessed time is greater than the amount of time one frame takes, well, it's technically update time, but you get the idea. And then, for every iteration of this, unprocessed time minus equals the amount of time one frame takes. And then here, I'm going to update the game. And my, why not? I should go ahead and put that there. And really, that's all that needs to be done here. The only other thing is, well, right now I'm drawing every frame. That's sort of defeating the point if I'm drawing every frame. So I'm going to create this little boolean called, I'll just call it render, 
which in the start of equals false. And here, if I'm actually update this frame, then render equals true. So if I need to render, then I render. And actually I'm going to add an else save into this. If I don't need to render, then rather than wasting a bunch of processor time doing this loop over and over again waiting to render, I'm just going to go ahead and do thread.sleep for one millisecond. And yeah, go ahead and surround that with try catch because for some reason that can fail. And yeah, so there you go. That This should be pretty much the entire update loop. As sort of a finishing touch, I'm going to add an FPS counter. So I'm going to create an int frames, 0, and I'm going to create a variable called frame counter, which also equals 0. It's going to the ints and log. So now what I'm going to do here is every time I render, I'm going to increase the amount of frames in my frame count. And where I'm updating the unprocessed times, I'm going to say frame counter plus equals past time. And what I'm going to do here is in my unprocessed time update loop, if my frame counter is greater than or equal to time.second, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to system.out.println frames because that'll be the amount of frames that have passed in a single second. Then I'm just going to reset my frames and reset my frame counter. And that should give me an FPS counter, but just to have a really final touch, I'm going to go ahead and create the game class. So, not going to do much here, just going to create public game, empty constructor for right now, public void input, public void update, and public void render. And that's it. It's going to be a skeleton right now. So, I have a private game game for my main component. And of course, I'm going to initialize my game. So it's going to be a new game. And where I'm updating the game, first I'm going to get the game input. And then I'm going to update it. So that way it takes into account any changes in input right there. And why not? In my render method, I can go ahead and call game.render even though it doesn't do anything right now. Just as a final touch. So now if I run, I should be getting a frame counter. So there you go. I'm getting, apparently, uh, about uh, 200 frames. Oh, 400 frames. It's going up. So those, that's my frame rate. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time. Oh, and one final thing. Every time you update the game, you should set the delta. It's not changing in this particular case, and it's going to be the frame time, because that's the amount of time for, for every one of these. It's not going to be changing in this case, but if I change this around a bit, it's just going to make life much easier to change this method around later if I need to. So with that all out of the way, thank you, hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.